Well, it was the life story of another extraordinary character that inspired the film Machine Gun Preacher. Sam Childers was a violent criminal, a hell's angel who'd done time in prison for drugs. He turned his life around after finding God, but his epiphany came when he heard somebody in church talking about the plight of kids in Uganda and southern Sudan who had been kidnapped and turned into sex slaves and child soldiers by a cult-like militia called the Lord's Resistance Army. Childers goes out to Africa, builds a heavily fortified orphanage and then sets about rescuing the kids with a machine gun and several sympathetic members of the Southern Sudanese Liberation Army. He uses his congregation back home in Pennsylvania to raise money for his mission using similarly aggressive tactics. This girl watched her family being killed and then they set her on fire. This is not necessary. That? No, 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 John, just look it. at John, John, look at the picture. I'm looking look at the picture. Now, I ain't asking for money for a hot tub or a vacation or something like that. I'm asking for for an extra vehicle so that I can save some children, John, okay? Do you understand that? I do, but I'm telling you But nothing! Gerald Butler as Sam Childers in Machine Gun Preacher. The Scottish-born actor, whose best-known role was the King of the Spartans in 300, told me about the first time he met the real Sam Childers. I'm at his house in Pennsylvania. He's surrounded by his preacher friends and his family and he's really holding court and he has the the famous toothpick in his mouth, loving the attention. But I looked at him and went, I like you. I, I, I just could see a guy who'd lived a life and had a lot going on inside him, you know, both beautiful and not so beautiful, but somebody that I could connect to and 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 but quite scary i mean presumably he sort of you know we see him losing his temper a lot in the film is Mm -hmm. he like that in real life um i've seen him get angry not with me but i've seen him get angry but not to the extent that he does in the film because you know we weren't out fighting in the war in africa but i know other people that we're working with who had seen him lose his temper and he's no he's a scary cat but i gotta say i kind of like that I mean, as long as there's a fairness in there. And what other research did you do for this film? I mean, did you sort of throw yourself into the very complex situation in southern Sudan with the Lord's Resistance Army and so on? Did you, did you, did you read up a lot about that? Yeah, and you watch documentaries, you know, about the, you know, like the Lost Boys of Sudan and there's documentaries with Sam. I kind of broke down all the individual things. So I'm on YouTube finding every kind of preaching style. Then there's Sam the Biker, so you're watching a biker movie movies and documentaries, breaking down all those different things. There's religion, there's the issues in in, in Sudan. I had a folder that I used that I compiled with all the photographs from these child soldiers, the Sudanese People's Liberation Army to the Lord's Resistance Army, the atrocities that have been committed, mass graves, kids with arms chopped off, eyes burned out, you know, mothers. Difficult to watch. Difficult to watch. That's why I spent every day, by the way, was looking through these folders that would get me into that space. Like, for instance, in the bank scene when I'm trying to get the money to buy that new van, I would literally finish the scene, go to the side, open the book, look at those photos, and I'd just be crying. To sort and of fire I'd, yourself up yeah, again. Yeah, and then I'd pull it back in, then I'd go in, and I would look at a man who didn't care about what I was looking at in those photos. But you do that every day for months and then you're also living in that environment you know when there's a kid blowing in half I have to pick up that kid special effects will take half his body away but I have to pick up this kid and imagine that I'm holding a kid who's been blown in half and it gets it gets hard you know I mean the movie was it definitely took its toll but at the same time it's so so much humanity and heart in there as well Because he's a complex character, isn't he? Because, you know, he's violent, he's done some pretty nasty things, he's pretty selfish. I mean, you know, he neglects his own family very often to pursue this crusade, and and he does see it as a religious crusade. How much of a challenge was it making him likeable, but at the same time showing him how he is? Um, That was a big challenge. Of course, despite it being a true story, if you go too much to the one side, too much to the side of violence or selfishness or neglect, then you're going to lose the audience. If the audience just don't like the guy, then your movie's dead in the water. And and the fact is that through all this, despite the fact that he has some unlikable traits, he is a good guy. So, for instance, there's a scene at the beginning when I'm robbing the crack house where I use much more profane language, much more racist language, and I was way more violent. It's already a violent scene. But I had the guy open in his mouth and my gun in his mouth 
and it was it was too much. We had to tone down a lot of stuff because you you want people to know how bad it is. You know, now I'm talking more about the Sudanese situation. You want people to know how bad it is, but you can't sit in that. You can't. Because really. I mean, some of the things that Joseph Kenny does are, are so unspeakable. I'm actually have to say, I found the first scene where a small child, the Lord's Resistant Army, attacks a village um, in southern Sudan, and we see a, a small child forced to kill his own mother, and it is almost uh, unbearable to watch. Now, at one point in the film, an aid worker confronts Sam and says, you're just as the same as your nemesis, Joseph Kony, who leads the Lord's Resistance Army. You both claim to be men of God, but you both use violence and guns to achieve your end. Africa doesn't need any more armed men. And she's got a point, hasn't she? <laughs> she does have a point. I love that we kept that in the movie, you know. It's not an argument that I could really deal with when I was playing Sam. I didn't want to get into any kind of moral judgment because Sam didn't judge himself like that. Sam was just going ahead doing what he did. If there's one thing that he believed in was his cause. The difference is, though, if you're going to argue it like that, is Joseph Coney, he does nothing good. His army literally go in, they kill everybody, they kidnap the kids, they turn them into child soldiers, they have no political agenda. Whereas, take Sam Childers out of the equation, there would be a thousand kids dead or still missing or committing murder themselves, and there would be another 1,500 children a day who would not have been fed for the last 20 to 25 years. Sam, before he even got involved in that, had a mobile unit, you know, health unit, he had feeding programs. Him fighting in that war was only one part of, of, of what he did. And I had a friend who w- was a TV journalist in Rwanda during the genocide and years later decided to make a, a feature film, Shooting Dogs, about what happened there because he said it didn't matter how many TV news reports or how many documentaries he made about that situation. It would never reach as many people as making a feature film and getting it into a multiplex. You're absolutely right, which is why I wanted to do this. When I I, I started educating myself about this, even reading those articles, it is a case of, oh, wow, look, look how many people, five million people dead in the Civil War, or so many displaced, or half a million here. But their numbers are such vast numbers. Even the documentaries I watched to be very powerful. But suddenly when you dramatize that situation and you are there, When one child dies, you see one child cry and it becomes so real. I was so affected when I read this script and I thought, well, if I'm this affected, I know that however affected you are by by a script, if you get it right, it's 10 times more powerful by the time it's turned into a movie. Gerald Butler and Machine Gun Preachers out next Wednesday, uh, November the 